Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cosmic Climate. So I'm actually switching it back to the Cosmic Climate, back to just the audio only. I feel for me, it just gives me a lot of flexibility on when I record because then I don't have to worry about getting all like dolled up for you guys. And I could just sit here with my coffee and like my pajamas and do a recording. I'm also hoping that my plan is to get back on schedule with recording these, having it ready for you all by Monday, because I am going to be looking at the energy from October 28th through November 3rd. And so, you know, obviously we've already experienced October 28th. So I just kind of want to have, um, some time for you all to really, um, prep for the energy that, um, is going to be present for the week. So hopefully I can get back on schedule, um, with that. So thank you so much for your patience and all of that. So like I said, I'm going to be talking about the week of um, October 28th through November 3rd. Some highlights of this week is basically we have um, Uranus opposing, um, uh, I'm sorry, Uranus opposing the sun, which uh, that happened at exactly, um, it happened at exact degree Monday, October 28th. So I'm recording this on Tuesday and I will have this up for you guys by Tuesday. So, which really, I mean, this is something that we're going to be feeling all week and for quite some time. And so it doesn't really matter if you listen to this like the day after or like a couple weeks after we're still, this all still resonates. Um, and I think you're meant to hear it when you do hear it. And so that is a highlight. Uranus opposing the sun. We have Mercury retrograde, which that takes place that begins October 31st on Halloween and Mercury's in Scorpio with that retrograde cycle. And then we also have Venus entering Sagittarius, November 1st. So, and that's interesting because that's a 111. So that is the big energy for the week. I did pull a card here, which is what you see on the screen at the moment is the Ace of Dicks disc. So I want to call into the energy of the Ace of Discs and just talk briefly about that and I'll tie it into the astrology for the week. But the main themes with this Ace of Discs, especially within the Thoth deck, is potential and inner and outer growth. So we know if you're familiar with Tara at all, the ace within any of the, the pip cards is basically a new beginning and a new cycle. So with the disc specifically, we have this potential for a new job, a new business adventure, or just looking at new sources of income, um, anything that's tangible, manifestation, um, you know, um, manifestation of, of even like your desires, um, or anything like physical or tangible. This is calling forth or bringing, or just saying the energy that is present is that potential for this manifestation. And so it's more so like, are you playing your cards, right? Are you really doing the work? Because this is here for you. It's waiting for you, whatever this represents to you personally. And now is the time to really, you know, take that, that seed, take that, you know, that whatever that is, that is here for you. Um, especially this is the energy of the week. So with this energy as well, there could be some sudden influx of resources. There is high potential for abundance. Um, this might be a good time to learn a new skill or, you know, just something tangible, um, working with something tangible, but the deeper meaning within this card. And that really correlates to where we are in the moment astrologically is basically the energy of coming into a greater understanding of ourselves through observation of nature and the seasons and basically become like coming, becoming more in harmony with it. So unifying with the energy of the universe with what you know, I've, I've been talking a lot about how our relationships reflect, you know, parts of ourselves that we need to work on, parts of ourselves that are awesome, you know, that, you know, um, that we need to integrate more of. And so by taking the time to look at your relationships, that will definitely 
help you manifest whatever it is that you're working on or release any, you know, karmic attachments that you are, you know, working to release. Whatever your attention is at the moment, looking at your environment with that in mind is going to give you um, some clarity um, and, and really gives you the potential for that inner and outer growth, which is the big theme here. So during the week, the sun and Venus are the most active, um, and there is a lot of positive energy this week, pretty much more, you know, positive than challenging. And so, like I said, we're starting the week with Uranus opposing the sun. So, you know, when there is an opposition, there is call for balance, um, call for harmony, moving away from extremes. Also, um, you know, there's call, call to look outside of oneself. Um, and so we have Uranus is, you know, opposing the sun because it's the sun is, you know, obviously the center of it all. And so as far as rela aspect relationships, you have Uranus um, making this aspect to the sun. And so it's going to be basically our higher consciousness, our soul seeking liberation and a particular area of life. And this is in opposition to the sun and what the sun represents. So, you know, that creative, you know, ego, also your inner child and your identity, those, you know, those particular themes. And so this relationship is calling us to balance, you know, that need for liberation from whatever we're feeling, um, constraint or, you know, wherever we're feeling trapped within our lives and feel like we just can't get it together and can't release ourselves. The way to really help ourselves, um, let go is to integrate more of, you know, one, what your sun sign represents using that as a tool is one. And then also, um, you know, working with your inner child could be one if you're having some um, inner child things comes up, come up or just like tapping into your creative self and what you have to present to the world or just getting out and be social and being playful and doing something fun that will naturally help you, you know, let go of whatever it is you're holding on to because Uranus is in Taurus. And so we are dealing with our resources on an individual level, we're dealing with our comforts and securities, you know, those foundations that aren't sustainable anymore. Our soul is wanting, is calling for us to release that. Um, and the sun is in its opposite sign. Obviously, there's that opposition. The sun is in Scorpio. And so that is really calling for us to you know, integrate more with the, the partner, integrate more with our, within our relationships, or even, you know, integrate more with a d deeper relationship within ourselves. And so it's just going deep with that, that, that creative ego and that inner child in order to really liberate ourselves from whatever it is that we feel like we can't let go of. Um, Another point to make with this, um, to point out with this Uranus opposing the sun and Uranus is, is retrograde at the time, at this time. And so whenever a retrograde cycle makes a big aspect to the sun where there's like an opposition or a conjunction, this signifies the halfway point of that retrograde cycle. So on October 28th, Uranus retrograde, um, cycle reached this halfway point. And so we're halfway through. And so what this could bring forth is aha moments, particularly in areas of life ruled by Taurus, you know, in your chart. Also, wherever that natal Uranus placement is, you might receive some aha moments with that in your particular chart. And also looking at the second house and the 11th house, because the second house is naturally ruled by Taurus and the 11th house is naturally ruled by Uranus. Or you can even go even deeper and look at where Aquarius 
what house Aquarius rules in your chart and see what's going on there. And if there are any planets in, in Aquarius and if they're making any aspects to Uranus. So that'll give you some, some insight. So you might receive some aha moments in regard to, you know, some things that you are working with and, you know, even where Uranus is that the transiting Uranus is, um, you know, activating what area of life that that transit is activating in your own chart. So you can get an idea of what is being called for ba into balance and how you can be one objective and really also how you can, you know, look at that, that feedback from your environment, like going back to that ace of discs where you are looking at nature and seeing what it has to tell you, um, and, and, becoming more, um, harmonized with that, because that's a big thing with balance, with the op opposition, um, energy is calling for balance. So we also have, like I said, Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, and that begins October 31st. I'm going to do a separate video on that as well, but just to briefly talk about Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, um, I've talked about it before and what I really feel what I'm channeling is that this Mercury retrograde is really calling us forth or calling us to, um, and guiding us to really go deep within our subconscious to really get a, a, a deep understanding of our subconscious beliefs especially if we are actively working on manifestation of some intention or if we're, act we're actively working on um, just working through our shadows and our you know challenges within the self and looking for that inner and outer growth. Um, this Mercury retrograde is a good time to really go deep within your belief systems because we do create our reality from our subconscious beliefs. And so we want to be able to go deep within that, bring forth whatever's in the subconscious, whatever we're struggling with and having challenges with, like really thinking to ourselves and really um, taking that time to understand or try to understand where that initially came from, you know? And at first it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna, really think back. I feel like everyone has, you know, when it comes to challenges, there's some indicator within that early childhood environment that, um, will have some correlation, excuse me, to whatever those challenges are, whatever's going on deep within the subconscious, definitely looking at your moon placement that will give you some understanding. And then, you know, if you can do any deep meditation, um, on that and go even deeper, you're probably going to, you know, um, recover some past lifetime where, you know, you have some karmic attachments to, you know, that particular, um, you know, either area of life or whatever challenges comes up, you know, whatever you're working through. And so it's going deeper and deeper and deeper. And then being able to transmute that and really break through those limitations so if you have any questions about how to work through that, definitely reach out to me because I, um, one, I'm working on it myself, but I have some material that I can probably share with you that will help you really go through some of that, that shadow and like work on, you know, not just only bringing it forth, but being able to transmute it as well. So in a nutshell, that is Mercury retrograde and that I'm channeling the, the big energy. Also, we're going to be, of course, um, dealing with uh, mutual resources, you know, who's in charge of what, you know, those power dynamics, power over power under communication, how we perceive our environment, how we perceive our relationships, um, you know, so it's going to be all of those other archetypes too, but the big, big focus, especially like looking at this ace of disc for the week is going to be that inner and outer growth and potential for that. And in order to really get the best, um, you know, possible, um, you know, metamorphosis, um, is to really do that, that deep subconscious work and go within the subconscious. So hopefully that makes sense to you all. 
Um, so then I, like I said, another big energy is going to be this Venus entering Sagittarius, November 11th, which that is going to really guide us to turn to the right, to the right brain. Since Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and that's, you know, some representation of the right brain and your intuition. And so with Venus entering Sagittarius, it's asking, it's guiding us to really tapping into that right brain and asking those questions, um, those bigger picture questions, and just looking at the broader perspective of all of these things, especially with Venus, you know, having that rulership of Taurus and Libra, we're still working within relationships. We're still working with balance. You have that Uranus opposing the sun. So that's coming through. And also we're still working with, um, you know, like I said, the relationships and our values, especially with that Uranus being in Taurus and Uranus is going to be in Taurus for six, about six years, six more years. It has a seven year cycle. And so, um, this is really asking us to look at the bigger picture and trying to get like us, like a deeper yet broader perspective of what's going on here. And so that's something that you want to keep in mind during the week. And that's going to be more so towards the end of the week. But Venus entering Sagittarius is going to be um, a nice little shift for us. And um, this will just help us, you know, like with Sagittarius energy, it tends to be, in my personal opinion, a lot lighter. Um, There's going to be some strong desire to expand our consciousness on, you know, one, when you just think about Venus in itself, like things that we enjoy, things that are beautiful, you know, um, and it's connecting with nature and the cosmos. So coming back again to that ace of discs is that Venus, um, kind of that Venus in Sagittarius representation. But before Venus enters Sagittarius and right before Mercury goes retrograde, so October 30th, um, Mercury and is going to be conjunct to Venus. They're going to make that conjunction, um, which is, I feel like is going to be sweet. Um, just having Mercury meet with Venus right before it goes retrograde. So what's going on here is that Mercury is going to get a little, I feel positive boost or just maybe like some insight or this nice little shift of, you know, what our values are within our relationship. Um, you know, how to find that balance within whatever's going to be coming forth for Mercury retrograde the next day. So that's, um, something to think about and some energy that's going to, you know, um, come into play right before that retrograde cycle. So maybe looking at your own personal chart and looking at where Mercury is in the charts and where Venus is and where Scorpio, the house that Scorpio rules, because that's going to give you an area of life or of where that's going to come through. And so it's like, okay, what is being called for balance? What area of life am I, should I be like looking at the bigger picture as, you know, I'm going through this Mercury retrograde deep into the subconscious, deep into the dark waters of ourselves and, and really working through any challenges, limitations, trauma that might be coming forth. So that's something to keep in mind. And that is again, happening October 30th, um, which is going to be the day before the retrograde cycle. And so I think I feel complete with this. Um, the sun will be trining the North node at the end of the week. And so, like I said, we have this energy of the sun in opposition to Uranus, which is going to be, you know, you can have some, we can experience some aha moments, but we can also experience, um, a lot of friction if you're resisting that liberation from past comforts and outdated, you know, foundations and things of that nature. Um, then you might feel a little bit of friction and pull from that opposition. But by the end of the week with that trying to the North node, you're going to be feeling a natural flow or a natural, um, push towards that emotional self-reliance. So either way, if you're resisting or you're working with it, you're going to really come into those aha moments. Um, and really 
find some relief within your, your sense of self, your confidence, your creative endeavors, you know, that relationship with your inner child. Um, and you're going to feel some flow between that and just gaining some emotional self-reliance or just nurturing that part of yourself, um, by the end of the week. So I do feel complete with this. If y'all have any questions, comments, definitely leave them below. I am still offering Scorpio season, um, personal astrology readings and that, that offer goes up until October 31st. Um, is the last day to book for that. And there will be a focus on Mercury retrograde for this reading. And yeah, so the link is below. And if you um, are interested in an in-person or distant reading, you can definitely also book with me with that. I'm still offering that 25% off discount Astro 111 as a code. And I hope you guys have a great week. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll be talking to y'all in the next one.